Hi, let us talk about the nature and form of the contract of sale. But first, compared with other contracts, for example, agency, partnership, guarantee, deposit, sale is easier to learn and understand. Why? Because sale is a common contract. Common contract because almost every day we enter into this kind of contract. Whether the so-called actual sales or the more popular nowadays because of the pandemic, the so-called online selling. How does the law define the contract of sale? Under Article 1458 of the Civil Code, sale is defined as a contract whereby one of the contracting parties, called the vendor or seller, obligates himself to transfer ownership and to deliver a determinate thing, while the other party, called the vendee or buyer, is to pay the price of this object, which price must be certain in money or its equivalent. Furthermore, under Article 1458, an absolute sale is a sale without condition attached. Here, the buyer becomes owner of the thing upon its delivery even if the buyer has not yet paid the purchase price. On the other hand, a conditional sale is a sale where there is a condition attached. And usually, but not always the case, that condition is the full payment of the purchase price. And in a conditional sale, the buyer becomes the owner of the object, not upon its delivery, but upon fulfillment of the condition. And as you learn in your obligations and contracts, a condition is either a future and uncertain event, for example, the full payment of the price, or a past event unknown to the parties. Let us talk about the elements or requisites of sale. The elements or requisites are categorized into three, namely, essential, natural, and accidental elements or requisites. What are essential elements or requisites of sale? Basically, when you say essential elements or requisites, these are the so-called building blocks of the contract. In fact, not just the contract of sale, but any other contract for that matter. Essential elements of the contract are those elements which, absent any of them, there is no contract of sale. The essential elements of sale are consent or meeting of minds of the seller and buyer, object. Or subject matter which must be determinate or at least capable of being determinate and then the last is the cost or consideration which refers to the price certain in money or its equivalent now the word equivalent here doesn't mean equivalent in terms of object or property no because when an object is delivered in exchange for another object, then it is no longer a sale but a barter or exchange. So the meaning of the word equivalent is those documents or instruments that could be used as substitute for money. For example, you have negotiable instruments like bills of exchange including checks as well as promissory notes and other negotiable documents of title. On the other hand, when you talk about natural elements or requisites, these are already inherent in a contract of sale. 
they automatically form part of the contract unless of course the parties expressly agreed to exclude these elements. Examples of these natural elements of requisites are warranty against eviction and warranty against hidden defects. Then the third kind of elements or requisite are the so-called accidental elements or requisites. They are present or absent in the contract of sale depending on the particular stipulations of the parties. Examples are place of payment, time of payment, interest, and penalty. So, what if the parties did not specify, for example, the place and time of payment? Well, under the law, if the parties did not agree specifically on this place and time of payment, the law will supply the deficiency. In other words, it depends on what the law provides in this case. Now, what are the characteristics of the contract of sale? As a contract, sale has the following characteristics. Consensual, bilateral, onerous, commutative, nominate, and principal. As a consensual contract, sale is perfected by mere consent of seller and buyer. What do you mean by this? It does not require any formality as a general rule. For example, o order ka sa food panda. Diba, pag dumating yung order mo, may pinipirmahan ka bang contract of sale with the delivery boy or with the delivery pers uh, personnel? Wala naman, di ba? But what you have entered into is a contract of sale. Or another example, pumunta ka sa sari-sari store. May binili ka doon. May pinirmahan ka ba at yung may-ari ng sari-sari store? Wala. But nevertheless, that is a contract of sale. Or another example, pumunta ka sa market. Namili ka sa market. May pinirmahan ka ba na kontrata o kasunduan? Wala. But still, you entered into a contract of sale. Because when you say consensual contract, it is perfected as soon as the parties have come to an agreement not only with regard to the object, but also with regard to the price. Hindi naman na kailangan pumunta pa sa abogado para magpanotaryo ng dokumento Kasi hindi na yun ang kailangan o requirement ng batas. Second characteristic of sale is that it is bilateral. When you say bilateral, not only one of the parties, but both of them are obligated to each other. Of course, the seller is bound to deliver and transfer ownership of the object, while the buyer is bound to pay the purchase price. The third characteristic is sale is onerous. When you say that sale is onerous, it means that the seller and the buyer give to each other some valuable considerations to acquire their respective rights and title. Then fourth, sale is also commutative. Commutative in the sense that what the parties give to each other are more or less of equal values. Also, since the contract has a particular name, and of course the name is sale, sale is considered to be a nominate contract. And finally, because sale can exist with or without another contract, sale also has the character of a principal contract. Thank you for listening and watching. Have a good day.